Okay. So what we are uh, showing here are the tools for delineating the edge pens. Actually, the tools are not so new in the sense that uh, these are tools that were developed in the last uh, 30 years. Uh, let's say 20 years, they, they were at new things. Now there are many of them. Actually, they derive from a, a set of tools I did for my PhD thesis. And then they were involved in several times. Uh, if so, someone of you is inter interested also in some new possible development of this stuff, I can tell you something maybe tomorrow. I don't know if I am able to prepare a, present a short presentation for tomorrow. But there are some guys around that uh, continues to work on these topics and produces something which is actually new. Okay, when I talk to my students to these topics, I used to cite this uh, Borges. Uh, Borges. Uh, Borges is a, a Argentinian uh, um, novelist, and uh, he, he, he wrote a novel called The Exactitude of Science, uh, where they say that in China they were uh, trying to reproduce uh, perfectly the, with images the maps of, uh, of, uh, of, of the country. So the maps were uh, more and more precise, and at the end the maps coincides with the country itself. So it, at the end, the, and uh, this is uh, the entire city, the entire was reproduced by maps. So maps are simplification of reality, actually. Not like si. like this this thing. Okay. The objective e here is uh, to give you some basic concepts about uh, what is behind the the contemporary uh, delineation of of a river networks, uh, which some some kind may be hidden to you because. Uh, uh, most of these tools are consolidated, so you find in any GIS, in, a, in any modern GIS, there is a, a tool that does this stuff in more or less the same way, not exactly the same way. And, uh, and maybe you are used to just do it without thinking what you are doing. So what I am trying is to, to start from the scratch. Uh, First is the discretization of the terrain in digital elevation models. Uh, when I started this job was, uh, I think, 1901. Maybe someone of you was not even born. And uh, the very first EM we did was, uh, uh, we, we have a room upstairs, our lab, which is a little bit, isn't more or less as this room. And we just have maps no digital models. So we wanted to create a, our digital model. And so we did the map, we take the Xerox of the map, we did larger and larger until we had all the, the floor of the room filled with the map, and then we did squares of the map, and then in each square we went to see what was the elevation and produced the, our first digital elevation model. Now, obviously, the, the reality is completely different because we know uh, the digital elevation all over the Earth and the, uh, the SRTM or the um, other, other data are even more precise. More or less, we know uh, the, 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 the surface of the Earth at least at 10 meters uh, with easy available data everywhere. But in special region, for instance, in this region, in the whole Italy, we have a, a, a LiDAR data of the surface, one meter, two meter at most, of size. So uh, essentially, we know every piece of uh, every stone. And the precision is very high because we see the, uh, we see the roads, we see the, the platforms. Anyway. Uh, now we directly have a grid of data. Uh, 
at the beginning we have uh, the terrain which is something kind of continuous thing and uh, we uh, in the we maybe maps with cordon line and this is exactly the the work we did we get the contour line the contour line was a uh, the elevation and it was like oh if it is a little bit here it's not 696 is some 695 meters and so on the actual the old strategy to the to get the elevation was to to use the, the, the usual topography method meaning that they were uh, triangulations so clouds of data like this now a laser scan by airplane or by satellites goes over and detect all the all the surface more or less uniformly so and, and, and give back a grid you, uh, or we have and sometimes we had a contour and flow line and then in the traditional map we were used to have contour line and flow lines so our data are more or less like this no 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 not exactly like, like this because they are quite historical as uh, slides and uh, here you see that we have an integer number meaning meters in this case now we have centimeters Decision of centimeters over absolute, the absolute ellipsoid. When we have this data, anyway, we have this kind of data, a grid of uh, equally spaced data. What we can do with it? We can first derive the primary uh, attributes, meaning we can apply some. Um, differential geometry. The altitude or elevation as I call it, the slope and the curvature. And how are they uh, selected? But the, the altitude, obviously you have, uh, you think that the landscape is just a function of a position. Usually the position is, is given in two coordinates. It's and wide met metric coordinates, but also longitude and latitude sometimes. But if you have longitude and latitude, then you have to transform these things into metric coordinates for, for our purposes. With some problems, because we are, when you have small basins like this one that are presented here, uh, there is no problem. But when you have large basins, you have to deal with projection and the fact that the earth is a sphere is not a flat, no, no flat terrain deliver here. Flat, flat earth deliver, so it is a sphere and you have various projection and the, line, and the largest basins in the world, you have to use direct the longitude and the, and the latitude and do the transformation, otherwise you cannot patch all the uh, let's say the mass mass all together and that the right areas and the right indications you can represent altitude in different ways usually use a system called a GIS geographic information system which is both a visualization system and a way to manage the data that stand behind the visualization and this is a, a usual representation actually here you see also the linear agent is the, the river network, but uh, to know how the river network is uh, extracted is not trivial at all. You have to decide where the, the channel begins, for instance, or if, it, if the channels are a, a thing that is uh, fixed, which is not. Or you can represent uh, that was a direct representation of a digital elevation model with the GIS. This is a representation with contour lines. The GIS here was unique. There was a, a, a GIS uh, which Silvian and his colleague of uh, hydrologist developed, really developed this, this uh, GIS. Now it's still existing, but is kind of an incubator of in, uh, in the, is still alive, 
that we are not using anymore, let's say. When you have elevation, the first thing you can do is you do statistics. Who is the, the uh, statistic, statistics lover here? Uh, for instance, this is uh, uh, the, uh, the statistics of this catch paint was an Israeli written Meledrio, which is actually Meledrio is a sh uh, small basin here, uh, 100 kilometers from here, but uh, the, the, the statistic is the, the entire Val di Sole. And you see we have caught three, more than 3,500 meters. The, the smallest one is 800 meters. And here you have the distribution of elevation. Obviously, you understand something if you look at the elevation, because you see that some faults are more uh, are more, uh, there are, yes, you have a plateau in around 2,000 and another sort of plateau around 2,000 and 500 meters. You can also do, this is, if this is the distribution, you can do the cumulative distribution, <coughs> which is kind of a sort of a probability. Uh, you expect the probability is a curve like this one. And uh, you see the same, uh, the, the, the original is very rough. This is very rough, but this is, this is actually very smooth. It's so the, in, the integral can hide to you some, some of the reality behind it. That uh, when you model the height, in this case, you have actually a, a model, a digital elevation model, but not necessarily this model is suitable to, for hydrological uses. For instance, you can see here, there is a, a, a digital elevation model representation and you have some red pixels. These red, red pixels are holes meaning point that are uh, lower than the, the surrounding one. From the hydrological point of view, we want that the water goes from a point and goes down, 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 downstream. And doesn't fo fall in the, in the hole. So we expect that topography is, uh, as a, is a hydrologically correct in the sense that we can identify the flowing direction in any, in any place. So any of this software, and we our is called pit filler, fill these holes to establish what we call later drainage direction, the direction of, of flowing. Anyway, before go, to go to the, the flowing direction, we talk not, not only of elevation, but also of slopes or gradients and, and which is the first derivative of the of the elevation so nothing particularly complicated we have a zeta z which is a function of x and y we take the, deri the derivatives in y and x and uh, the derivatives are two components of a vector we call the gradient of it. Actually, we, the gradient we are interested in is in the reverse sense because the gradient goes from top to, uh, from bottom to top, and we, we, we went the other way around. But usually we split this concept when we are talking of these things in, in two parts. The modules of the gradient, the, the gradient is a vector. We take the modules, uh, which is this one we see, and we call it slope. Well, so we, when I, I call the slope, okay, no. We take the modulus, which is the intensity, and we take also the, the slopes. But we are in three dimensions, so this is, the, the, let's say, let, let me reverse the sense of the gradient. This is the direction of the slope. 
and this is the intensity of the slope may be my harm. But I am also oriented in space. So if this slope is going east in this case, this slope is going north. So uh, the information contained in the gradient is uh, both the slopes and also another quantity which is called aspect. And, the, and this are the formula that pro, from which we obtain the slope and the aspect. And these quantities are easy to, to uh, be estimated with the finite the difference. And uh, it, as in the previous case of elevation, we are able to, to estimate the statistics. For instance, we have the slopes and the probability of slope. I didn't plot the distribution of, uh, of aspects, but uh, that would be another interesting information, though. And as you see here, there is a preferential slope here, actually, the, the abscissa is not particularly, uh, particularly uh, significant because uh, you see this number, you are, able, you are able to understand the slope in terms of, of uh, degree, not in terms of uh, absolute values. Here are uh, radians, the tri uh, tri trigonometric radians, but that's the case. What happens if you uh, represent the slopes on the same map? Where before we represented the, the, the elevation. You see that some uh, particular features are appearing. For instance, here on top, you have, uh, you have slow gra uh, slow, uh, smaller slopes. And here you have higher slopes. Uh, for your convenience, I also uh, draw the uh, uh, river network that we don't know how to identify yet. And so we say that the river here is the biggest slope is close to the river, meaning that the river is in the canyon. Is uh, we even from the image from this one as this one we we are able to get information about the processes because uh, if the river is excavating probably the, the, this will be uh, uh, the, 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 the bed of the river will be on bedrock and uh, it says something of the, on the relative between the climate and the erosion capability because if the climate is humid a lot of soil is produced and if a lot of soil is produced, this is taken away from the hills up and brought into the channels and transported into the channels. But then the water has no power to transport any more uh, sediment and so cannot, be ero cannot erode. Here, the climate is in a sense dry with respect to the, to the uh, to what is happening here because we have not much uh, sediment production here such that in this place here we the water still have power for erosion and the road then there should be other consideration to do because for sure this is in the in the glacial, <coughs> after the glacial position this uh, this thing and so we have a strong inheritance of the past where there were a glacier on, on top of it. That is another argument. We saw also here a strange thing. We have flat, a flat area. Flat area can be an artifact, can be a lake, can be something else. I already commented the figure, so that we don't need this one, it's just an explanation of what happens. And for what is the artifact of before, you see the catchment is this one that you see over there. And the, the artifact actually is a, a, a quarry. So there is something which is not natural in this case. And this levels 
the world, the world is used. Let, let, let's see. Let's see. It's hot, no? I can open. Thank you. Yeah, let's see here. Here we have another, another patch paint where we plot the slopes. Here the, the appearance, I, mean, I, don't, I didn't plot here the, the river network. But you can imagine that the river network is in the place where uh, is on the bottom, and you see here the, the, a completely reverse landscape. Here, the maximum of slope is close, is outside the network, is on top <coughs> of the basin. And in fact, if you go to see here, this is the catchment. There are dolomites. You have the smoothest area down there. You have dolomites in San Martino di Castrozza, the Pali di San Martino. So we get the, the message here that is that from the elevation statistics of the low slow statistics and the arguing of, what, of how they are connected, we still have information uh, on the processes acting. Just looking at the, those data, in for some part. Uh, the hydrology is written in the landscape because there is a strong interaction between the landscape forming and the hydrology that is on the landscape and the climate also in the landscape. The third thing that I was mentioning was uh, the curvature. What is the curvature? Here we have a flat segment. Not curvature. Concave and convex. So concave and I will arrive there. This is a curvature. Okay, this is a curve. To have a curvature, first you need to have a curve. Yeah. And the the curve that denotes straight has some curvature. You, you can have vertical and planar curvature. Because you, you see, the, if you see the line in 3D, you have a curvature in this direction and also a curvature in this direction. So you have a planar curvature like there and, and a, a vertical curvature like this one. Uh, this one, like a parabola, upward parabola, is negative curvature. This is a positive curvature, depending to the parabola and this is close zero curvature. The meaning of the curvature is that if you could draw a the tangent uh, circle to a point to a curve, the curvature is, act, is exactly the inverse of the radius of this of this circle. From and it can be calculated. It's a dimensionless quantity. So if you have a planar curvature like this, you see you have we have the curve, we draw we draw the tangent vector in different point A, B, P. And uh, we make the difference between the, the the tangent vector in A and the tangent vector in B, and the curvature again is the difference of this of these two vectors when the point get closer and closer. So curvature has different geometrical meaning. It's the difference between the, 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 the tangent of the curve and at the same time the inverse of the of the radius of the um, of, of the circle that we see before. So if you have the curve in plane the things event becomes more complicated but the concept remain the same actually the curvature but we have uh, the, the main message here is that we have two types in three dimension we have two types of curvature one is uh, let's say more the vertical curvature and another is the planar curvature and so here we, there is a scheme of how to 
estimate the curvature. For the planar curvature, so what happens with the landscape? I, I told you that curvature is something connected to curves, not surfaces. Actually, you have also the curvature of the surface because Gauss defined the curvature of a surface. But here, what, what you see depicted here is that you have a surface. But you see also the contour lines. When you uh, draw the contour lines here, and you, you have lines, and we, you can calculate the curvature of the contour lines. The curvature of the contour lines is the planar curvature. And we can do some calculation, and the formulation is the one that you see over there. Now it's not important that in this few instant you remind the formula, but you just remind the concept. Planar curvature is the curvature of the, the, of the contour lines. And here you have what you said before. Here you have negative, concave curvature, and you have positive curvature. This is quite important because if I ask you where the river network stands, you will say, oh, the river network stands here, not here. Because in case the image that you have is not yet defined, but the image that you have of a river is that it's something excavating and creating a concave type of morphology. So in the geometrical differential form of the mountains is included water and erosion. We look at bars where we have no water. We look at these shapes, and we can tell that somewhere in some places there were water. Because those forms are absolutely related to the action of a, a liquid something that flow around. Maybe liquid methane in some cases. But it's a little bit different. So planar curvature. Now, you can also say that uh, we, this line here, what is this line? Is the orthogonal to the, we, we didn't draw here the, the, um, the contour line, but you can see that the contour line can be this one. And this line is orthogonal to the, to the contour line. Again, it is a line. And again, we can estimate the curvature of this line again. The curvature of the lines orthogonal to the, the, the contour lines is the profile curvature. Mm -hmm. Even in this case, you have two, type, two main types of curvature. We have negative curvature, which is convex this way, and positive curvature that is this way, concave. So a real landscape is the mix of uh, these cases, uh, four cases, and the inter intermediate cases, which is the planar curvature in, in, in all directions. A positive here um, Upward. appears in this topic because of uh, water Root. No, positive because it comes out from from the geometric uh, the differential ge geometry. Let's think to a parabola. Mm -hmm. The parabola has positive positive uh, mm -hmm. parameters when it's going upward, and negative parameters when it goes downward. The same applies here because essentially the coefficient of the parabola is uh, this uh, approximated this one are an approximation of the correlated to the curvature. You, we have also a third type of a curvature actually, which is the tangent type of, uh, of, uh, of, of curvature. So we have the profile curvature over here, the, the planar curvature over here, 
and the tangent, you, you, you build the plane, essentially with the tangent curvature, you, you build the plane, uh, and you intersect this plane with the, uh, with the landscape, and the line, and you measure the curvature of the line of, of this intersection. Uh, the planar curvature and the tangential curvature are related to each other, and then we use all, all, only the planar and the profile curvature. Not tangential. Uh, profile curvature are, you know, these are, this is a program by Morecchi and Orlandini, two Italians, actually there, there are the contour lines, so we have a curvature of the contour lines, we have a curvature of the flow lines. Uh, as you see here, the, the, the contour line tends to be continuous line, and sometimes they are closed, like here, around the peak. Or, you have a peak here, and these are divides, while the, the tangential are more, more complicated, and they can merge here. Which, which, which is quite a complicated from the point of view of a curve. When you think to a curve, you think not something branching, you think something continuous. Here you create something branching, so it's a little bit more complicated. Uh, you can see positive value. Uh, so you expect to have valley where? You expect to have valley valley where you have negative curvature, where you are con concave, and you expect to have hill slopes where you are convex curvature, hill slope, river, okay, river, you have the curvature here and you have the curvature here also. So uh, again, the curvature tells a lot about the processes acting on the landscape, and uh, because they tell a lot of, uh, about the landscape, you can use uh, slopes, curvature, and curvature to understand where the river stands. Then there's the planar curvature, and you see actually that something comes out from <coughs> these images. It's not yet the river, but it's uh, uh, our mind that they used to connect the things even in wrong manner sometimes. Here, try to see the connection that form a, a branching structure that corresponds to a river. And we will use this information derived from a slope and curvatures to extract the network later on. The composition of the, of the form actually produced nine shapes because we have this, which is parallel and planar actually. Parallel and planar uh, in the different direction, and then we have this other form. If you see this one is a conoid, a fan, a fan, a place where uh, sediment is deposited. How other like this one are more or less, can be more or less places where you have a river, also linear type of form like this one. You can combine in a landscape the curvatures to find, to to produce a, a landscape like this in, in this nine combination and you see that the landscape is pretty much outside is pretty much spotted. You didn't believe so. Because actually because here you have a, a, a small the topography is meaning is barring at all uh, is less smooth that we uh, see with the eyes. That you have bumps everywhere. You, for instance, to trees, to houses that here were taken away, and other things. But even in this case, you can recognize 
behind the structure of the river. So more or less, this is the information we will use. I think now we can stop here because I, because I see you tired and start tomorrow morning. We will start from here to uh, uh, to give you the information from which you can extract the river network. And the form of the river network then is the first basis to extract the catchments. And from the catchment, we we will build as a rest the processes for the catchment. Thank That's you. all. Thank you. <coughs> Just, uh,